it's Christina. Hi everyone. Um, this video is gonna just kind of break the book in the parts, but also bring a lot of it together. Um, and I, when I, I read the Wide Sugrasso Sea, I read the notes that came with it. Whenever I have a book that has notes, I usually read the sentence, then I read the note in order to understand what they're talking about. So it was a very back and forth, but I actually enjoyed the book quite well. Um, this whole video I'm going to follow with about getting burnt. Pretty much um, what I related to in this book was the burning that occurs within the story. And I'm not just talking about the literal burning of the house down. I'm talking about a multitude of things. Um, allow me to explain. Um, we start out with this Creole girl who's being called a white cockroach. Who is being ostracized because of her race and descent. Um, specifically African American French. In a place that is controlled by the British, essentially. Um, and she is essentially bullied in a <clears throat> where um, she thinks she has a friend but this friend just goes around and stabs her in the back um, and actually throws something at her and regrets it and at the same time the character Antoinette sees herself because she bleeds it's running down her face as her friend has tears running down her face this sense of bullying struck me so hard because I was bullied in middle school horribly. I had stuff thrown at me, not stones, but planners, books, papers, pens, pencils, you name it. I was kicked, punched, pulled. I, I, I was I had rumors spread about me, like rumors were spread about this family. And I understand that feeling of I don't really belong, I don't like it, and I try to find my safe zone, and there practically is none, except at home. I can't relate to being ostracized because of race. That wasn't why I was bullied. I was bullied because I was the teacher's pet, I was the smart kid, I was the one, I had glasses, which just added to it, and um, I was all about my school. And that will not win you popularity points in middle school. It's a fact of life, unfortunately. Um, so I related to that. In a sense, that's how you can get burnt. You you are burned on the inside uh, because your emotions are hurt. You feel hurt because people are treating you like this, and you're you're not like that. You're different. And I'm the nicest person in the world, but I was still treated terribly. Antoinette, she's not mean, and she doesn't treat people, but she begins to hate them because they're treating her this horribly throughout the course of her life, and then they burn her house down, literally. And this burning, when it occurred, I don't know why I thought of this, but they talked about the people standing with torches and throwing stones now the throwing stones we can uh, relate to the bible how they threw stones at people who were undesirable who were unclean and such uh, but i i didn't see that right away i what i saw right away was i thought of the kkk or the ku klux klan i don't know why i thought of that but i actually envisioned from my community college days a video of them burning like a cross I actually envisioned that because the KK were known for their burning and were known for being brutal towards those um, who did not meet what they thought was the supreme race, in other words, African Americans and even homosexuals. So I, I made that connection and that's why the burning struck me so, because I'm like, oh my god, this is happening here too. And also what's interesting is this torches made me also think of Frankenstein. How this mob of people comes to the tower to burn the tower down because there's a monster within. 
where in this case the monster is a human being. It sends a chill down your spine to think people actually treated others this badly because they were French descent, because they were Creole, because they didn't fit what was considered the norm at the time. It's terrible. And she gets, she doesn't get burned, but she feels that burning sensation, the fire, she sees it, she, she experiences it, and she knows that the only reason it's happening is because of who they are as far as their heritage. Also, what I found interesting within this book is not just the burning of literal burning, um, but also the burning of the person's soul. And Tanette goes to, um, after this burning happens, goes to a covenant and stays within a safe zone. But then she is brought back and married to an Englishman, and she wants to <clears throat> love this man who actually does not love her. He has no desire towards her. It's an arranged marriage to him. It's not. It's nothing much, really. And this is like a burning of passions. She has this passion. He doesn't. And in a sense, she's getting burnt because she, you know, actually wants this to work but he hears all the rumors he hears everything being told and he doesn't know what to believe and he kind of just develops this mentality and she tries to win him over by using a uh what was called what he called a poison which was actually a medicine to try and win him over not the best way to go about it but but she was desperate. So, um, excuse me. So, that was like her burning in the sense that she got burnt because it didn't work. It didn't work. She, um, she gets drunk off rum and she starts to enter this maddening state. And then we enter part three where she has entered this state where she has been burnt. She doesn't know who she is anymore. She doesn't know where she is. She doesn't believe she's really in England, even though she's been on the outside. And she's with her husband, who has apparently inherited the fortune because his brother and father both died. And she has just lost it all. And suddenly she has this dream of burning the English home down. And when she wakes up, she waits for the person, uh, Grace Poole, to sleep and then gets up to go actually burn the house. Because she's been burnt too much where she just, she's done. She wants things to burn. She wants it all to just go away. So, that's kind of what I took from it. I did not see a ocean as the title portrays. I wasn't sure what to expect. I saw fire, the direct opposite, this burning of homes, this burning of passions that were not meant, and the burning of souls that just could not become whole, in a sense. Um, the final thought I have with this burning of passions and souls and everything is the connection that, or the disconnection, that Antoinette has with her mother. Many of you know, when I talked about my mother passing away, there's another part of the story you don't know. That mother I had, who passed away, was my adoptive mother. My biological mother is still living. And whenever I'm around her, it's always awkward. I feel distant, as this character, Antoinette, feels distant towards her own mother. Her own mother pushes her away, enters this men state, and as soon as um, her mother's sons dies, she just loses it. And I can almost understand this distance because I wasn't necessarily pushed away. I was abandoned. There's no other way to put it. Um, and my biological mother has her drinking problems and she's mentally ill. Maybe that's what was going on with Antoinette's mother. Um, so 
that didn't disturb me at all because I understood. I was very close to my mother who raised me from birth, but my biological mother, there's just no connection. People say, well, that is your mother. No, it's not. I'm sorry, it's not. And that's the whole thing with Antoinette as well. To her, that really wasn't her mother. Not really. Wasn't really there for her, not really. She kind of was on her own. And while I was not my own, I, I can understand that feeling. No. 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 Not really. So that's my take on the wild, wide Sargasso Sea. Wild. Um, and I didn't see an ocean. I saw the fires of burning passions and burning souls and just how you can get burnt and lose yourself in the end. And that's my thing. Take. So I look forward to your responses.